recession, unemployment, poverty, a lack of funding for public services, battling the deficit, the rising cost of health care, not having enough money to buy a home. What is the source to these economic troubles? Why is it so hard to afford a roof over our heads? Is land ownership connected in any way? Can the nation sustain growth while being responsible to each other? What would that responsible system look like? I think it's really important that we take notice of the fact that land is the most important resource in our economy. Clearly, our stewardship of land takes us right to the heart of what it means to be human. Things that belong to everybody, things that are given and provided by nature, if we can privatise those, then really freedom is not free. We're left with the hangover of these historic laws to favour those who own the land. I think everyone believes in economic justice. The problem has always been, how do we achieve that? We have to make good use of our land, and it has to not just respond to the economy, but it has to drive the economy. So the challenge then is, well, how do you make the value of land equally available to all? The UK has 60 million acres of land and a growing population of 63 million. The way population interacts with this land creates value for the UK. The question of how to redistribute this value back to all of the population is at the heart of our taxation system. But the present system is flawed, the present system is unfair, and the present system stifles growth. Yet there is hope. There are politicians, economists and academics working towards an alternative system. A system that is responsible, fair and sustains growth. A system that can find common ground across the political spectrum. This film will highlight the context and the importance of this alternative, as well as consider how the UK can achieve this change in system. Fundamentally, the tax system that we have does not work, insofar as it fails to raise sufficient revenue. It destroys jobs and trade and business, and it is essentially unjust. We see our manufacturing has declined dramatically. We see all sorts of businesses that are, that are suffering. I mean, business is crying out to end these punishing taxes that prevent them from employing more people, that prevent them from creating more revenue. We've got a whole perverse set of taxes which don't necessarily lead to the most efficient outcome not just in the economy, but in providing the basics like homes to uh, residents. At the moment in Britain, most of the land is owned by a small number of people and it's shared very unfairly. For centuries, decades, there has always been a feudal state of things. So there has always been the large land barons, the large landowners. In 1066, the Norman conquest of England saw all land taken under the ownership of the monarchy. To control his new kingdom, William the Conqueror gave lands to his followers in return for their military service and also allowed them the right to attend Parliament. Land rent at that time consisted of 100% of the national revenue and over the next thousand years, Parliament after Parliament found ways to shift the taxes away from landowners and onto land workers, entrepreneurs and traders. Only in recent history have people who are not landowners been allowed to become members of parliament. And the right to vote was only awarded to people who are not landowners within the last hundred years. Today, our democracy has freedoms built on political reform. But without land reform itself, land values will always be kept away from the majority of the UK population, who are the very people who helped to create that value. Simply to vote, you needed to have a beer landed interest. So we shouldn't be surprised that the public revenue system that's grown has not um, taken that fully into account. The same system that existed then is the same system that exists now. The only thing really that has changed is the semantics. So to say that we are all wards of the Duke of Westminster would be quite accurate. 
And at the moment, land is owned very unequally. And people who own land just have that as a private benefit. And these values shouldn't really belong to the landowner, whoever they may be. It's not about punishing everyone. It's those values should be going back into the community, back into the public purse. This idea that the land belongs to the people and therefore, for example, if you own a lucrative piece of land um, in London, um, the revenue from that land should in some way enhance the life, not only of people there, but it needs to enhance the life of people everywhere. So, what is land value taxation? Land value taxation, or LVT, is capturing land value on an annual revenue basis for government. LVT advocates always consider this as a tax shift and never as an additional tax. How do we value land? The general view is that land is worth what it can be bought or sold for. For annual revenue, a better view is to consider what the land will rent for. Without people, land has no value. With only one person, the same is still true. The value arises when two or more people want access to the same piece of land, and they have to compete for it. All land is unique in location and providing access to resources, and this becomes increasingly important as communities develop. With an agricultural community, the value of land is based on fertility and ease of farming. Once the community starts to trade and the food is bought and sold, access to the marketplace becomes more important. Next, the community starts manufacturing, and the value is now based on a number of new considerations, including proximity to the materials being used for manufacturing, access to an energy supply, access to the workforce, and also access to markets via road, rail, docks, and other transport. This development proceeds step by step so that we have very low values in agricultural land, higher values in industrial and commercial land, and very high values where people come together for retail and services based on investment and finances. It follows that proximity to a major metropolis will enhance land values. The whole community, the presence, protections and services that a whole community make available, create location value. The urban land, of course, is the most valuable land. The problem is, a lot of urban land is held out of use by urban landowners. They speculate on it. Why isn't it being developed? There are something like 170,000 homes caught up in installed developments with planning consents where developers are clearly land banking, uh, which could be almost certainly released uh, straight away. I think the problem is uh, fitting an LVT approach into an existing highly complex arrangement which has built up over many, many years, and how one would integrate that within our existing system. The, the current tax system in the UK has a whole range of problems associated with it. It doesn't really matter which bit you look at. The VAT system, because it has very different rates on different things, disturbs and distorts people's behaviour. The way we totally differently treat different forms of saving distorts people's behaviour. The way that we have the income tax and benefit system designed actually creates real problems for work incentives, more problems than it needs to create. There are also real problems with the way in which we tax housing, businesses and land. Um, it's unfair the way that we tax housing because council tax is deliberately regressive uh, and doesn't hit those right at the very top. It's distortive the way we tax businesses because we're taxing the value of the property that people build on the land, which actually creates a big incentive not to build valuable property. So all of these are serious, serious issues with the system. The system of taxation is an important driver for the economy and its responsibility sits with the government of the day. This is called the fiscal system. Taxes are paid to finance public services that are used by all. Healthcare, education, transport, communications, police, fire, justice, security and more. Taxes are also spent on paying back all the money we have borrowed with interest. 
all UK governments spend more than they receive in taxes and have created a UK debt that is currently £1.2 trillion. If we look at the money government raises in taxes and compare it to the money government spends and find the government spends more than it raises, we find that government to have created a deficit. One of the big questions asked is how to battle this deficit. Some believe we should spend less. Others believe we should borrow more and invest in infrastructure that improves the ability for the economy to produce wealth. Some believe in a combination of both. As well as battling the deficit, we are also facing an international economic crisis. We find there is a lack of jobs, a lack of affordable housing, and a lack of investment. You tax trade. You tax buying and selling things. So every tax you introduce increases the price that somebody has to pay and reduces the return that the seller receives for their effort. Not surprisingly, we discourage trade. We discourage production. We all know that there were window taxes, where people just locked up the windows. And if you want to tax income, which means taxing work, you're going to get less work. The current tax system encourages us who are land-owning farmers to maximise the area of land that we own. It means we get more subsidies and our total worth is increased if we have more land. The most farms have got, of any size, have got scrubby bits of land that they don't use and they don't want to use, and it just stays scrubby bits of land. Whereas people who want to get a foot on the farming ladder would give their eye teeth to get their hands on that scrubby bit of land. A responsible fiscal system aims to change the deficit into a surplus while facilitating a healthy and sustainable economy. Under a land value tax system, we would reduce the size of farm that we have to maximise its profitability, not to maximise its size. And that would leave more scope for newcomers who want to make a start in farming to do so. Well, there's no doubt, I think, uh, something like a land valuation taxation uh, would uh, move a lot of sites and properties on. Uh, because developers would frankly have to be uh, looking at their stock of sites and saying, can we afford to keep this um, line empty whilst we're getting uh, a, a, an annual valuation tax on the site? The big advantage of LVT is that it encourages land to come forward for development. It's theoretically, and I think in, in practice, a very efficient driver for the use um, and allocation of land. As far as land is concerned, the responsibility to the current generation is to ensure that it's available for use in a responsible fashion. And that use, of course, can vary enormously. Whilst land value taxation has yet to be implemented on a national level, there are already many responsible landowners who act as stewards, redistributing land value back to the wider community. The church still owns certain important and very financially lucrative bits of land. Um, but the church commissioners have particularly lately tried to focus on using that money to engineer the advancement of social capital in really deprived areas. We want to preserve uh, the environment, we want to preserve natural habitats, because they benefit human life in the long run. So the question then becomes, well, how do we protect those areas whilst allowing for a, a more natural form of development. So to me it's really important that land value tax goes alongside a planning system where local people actually have a say over how their land's used. So you get a balance between people choosing development of land and then gaining the value from that, or choosing to protect environments and then not having the value that would come from development. In one sense all land belongs to the whole of humanity, but I think if there is some concept of ownership operative, then it needs to work 
for the good of social capital. There would be a more equal, more balanced system. It would mean that real people on the street could live and work and grow every single day without worrying about constantly having to pay tax for the value that they don't really see. It would make a lot of sense in the northwest, northeast, where I similarly see a lot of empty vacant sites which have been lying empty since the 80s and the deindustrialization of, of the, the British economy at that time. We are all interconnected. We all have a social responsibility and an economic responsibility to give back what isn't ours, but what belongs to the community. In 1999, the Jubilee Underground Line in London was extended from terminating at Charing Cross to terminating at Stratford at a cost of £3.5 billion of tax funds. Landowners within 300 metres of each new station gained an average windfall of £200,000 per home. What effect did this have on these households? A renting household lives in one of these houses next door to a freehold homeowner household. Assuming that they spend and earn the same as each other, what effect does the windfall have on them? The renters have to pay an increase in rent, which they may be unable to afford, resulting in homelessness. Whereas the freeholders enjoy a rise in the value of their home of £200,000 that affords them options. Both households pay their taxes, both enjoy the better transport provision, but the freeholder also gets more than a lifetime's worth of taxes back from the windfall. The renter ends up paying the landlord more to enjoy the new service. In effect, the renters are paying for the public services and the profits of the freeholder. Is this fair? Is this progressive? What if projects like this were paid for in line with the benefits they bring? If LVT was collected at a 6% annual rate, paid by the people who benefit, in proportion to what they receive from increased land value, the Jubilee Line extension would pay for itself within 20 years. And those owning land near the stations would not get a free ride from the rest. If you are, for instance, putting in a high-speed rail at great public expense, all along that route are people who are now finding high-speed trains going along their back garden, and they don't like it, and they're right not to like it, and their land values will go down. And if the protesters about wind farms and so on uh, were aware that they actually, they would pay less tax if they got a wind farm, um, that might sweeten the pill. And it's only fair. It's a sacrifice they're making for the community. We're now contemplating a change of land use. Somebody now is going to be disadvantaged. Their land value obligation reduces. Somebody is now going to be advantaged. Their land value contribution tax is increased. But the community that's making that decision can decide, do we really want this form of activity going on here or not? And if we do, what are the implications for our revenue? the whole revenue for the whole community. One can see a direct benefit uh, f uh, of major infrastructure investment flowing through into property values. And if that could be harnessed, possibly through some form of LVT, I think that that would be an extremely interesting uh, prospect. What's attractive about LVT is that the land doesn't move, it's there. You know what it is, where it is, and you can tax it at whatever level the government decides. And, and what it would get rid of is this enormous industry to try to help people avoid taxation. At the G8 summit in June 2013, the UK positioned tax compliance as one of the most important issues facing the world. According to HMRC, Tax evasion in 2010-11 was £15 billion. That amount is larger than the total saved by cuts to the NHS, Arts Council, Education, Business Innovation and Skills, Communities and Local Government, Energy and Climate Change, and Police. Some consider the HMRC prediction to be modest. According to Tax Research UK, Tax evasion costs the UK £69 billion. Pounds. Neither of these estimates take into account the cost to the government of trying to chase the missing funds. 
In the age of austerity, where government services face cuts and systems are to be streamlined to be more efficient, perhaps now is the right time to consider an alternative strategy to dealing with the shortfall in government revenue. If a tax is easily evaded or avoided, the efficient answer is to replace it with a better one. Unlike money, land cannot be hidden in offshore banks. Land value taxation is an efficient tax system because it is cheap to collect and hard to avoid. When it is introduced, it allows other taxes to be reduced or replaced. Companies could free up resources spent on moving or hiding their money, could hire and develop more staff to undertake more productive work, and the tax evasion industry would be cut to size, putting more funding back into the economy and into public revenue. For HMRC, the huge amount spent on administration to chase impossible to collect funds could be reallocated to resource a much streamlined service. Internationally, in towns and states where land value tax has been introduced, other taxes have been reduced or dropped entirely. It's interesting why people haven't focused more attention on land as a source of revenue, especially at a time of austerity when you would think that they would be looking for all sorts of places to, to find more money to put into the economy, to put into public services. If we're to introduce LVT and it's to have the good effects that I believe it could have, you've got to get rid of every tax you can uh, other than that. It's got to be the key element of taxation uh, rather than consumption or, or necessarily income. Yes, well, the first tax that we'd obviously reduce are the taxes directly on land, which is stamp duty, which you have to pay when you buy or sell a house. Um, and inheritance tax, which you pay when you die, and no reason why that should be paid. Uh, but beyond that, we would like to tackle the really large tax revenue sources, which is income tax and VAT. But I think if you introduced a land tax, then you could certainly look at reducing income taxes to balance that out. And again, that would increase the equity because you'd have wealthy people who at the moment hold land, but don't necessarily pay a large amount of income tax on that. Um, and they would start to contribute more, whereas people on smaller incomes would actually be able to see their income tax reduced. Well, it's largely disincentive in that uh, we employ two full-time staff on the farm, but we have to send the wages for another man to the Inland Revenue for NIC and income tax uh, every month. I mean, when you think about it, it's, it's not just the tax that has to be paid, but the uh, the number of, of staff companies have to employ just to work out the income tax for the POYE system. It's all dumped from the, by the inland revenue onto the employers. VAT is a tax that works against the economy rather than for it. If you're going to tax the trade of every sale, what's the point of making sales? You could certainly reassess all the property taxes that we've got, including stamp duty, uh, and uh, more localised tax like council taxes. In the report we wrote in 2003, there were several references to the expected revaluation of the council tax. That's 10 years ago and it hasn't happened yet. And the longer it goes on, the more difficult it is uh, for the state to do it. So council tax is now just a figment of somebody's imagination. It's really daft. Now, the effect of stopping to collect any of those taxes would be that some people, most people, would have more money in their pockets. We can now afford to compete more, to buy, buy houses, to buy land, to rent land. So land values will increase as a consequence of a decline in other taxes. Hence the land values increase, hence the capacity to yield public revenue on that basis increase. The great thing about, uh, or the great potential thing about land value tax is it doesn't change people's behaviour. If, if the tax on a chunk of land is essentially the same whatever you do with that land, then it's not going to change the way that you behave. And in addition, it reflects the uh, increase in the value of that land, which is almost certainly nothing to do, or certainly nothing to do with what you yourself do. So if a road is built near to it, it may increase or decrease the value of the land, and that will be reflected in your tax payment if the value of the land shoots up 
because the Jubilee line has just been uh, sent towards it, uh, then you pay additional tax as a result. That feels very fair. It also feels efficient because it doesn't distort uh, your behaviour um, in any way. And if you're thinking, for example, of comparing a land value tax with the current business rate system, it doesn't create non-neutralities, it doesn't distort your decision about whether to uh, build a shack on it or whether to build a skyscraper on it. Uh, there are some in the movement who say that it should be the only tax, because no other tax has a moral basis. In 2012, Caroline Lucas MP asked Parliament to consider setting up a committee to look into how much it would cost to implement land value tax in England. Whilst the bill didn't make it to second reading, an early stage along the journey of a private member's bill, it did help to raise awareness. This is such an all-encompassing issue that I think a lot of politicians are just not quite comfortable with it yet. So we're stuck in this quagmire, this political quagmire, because there isn't this, this courage, this political courage, to actually push this through and dedicate oneself to it, not just for a year or two, but in the long term. It really couldn't be done on a private member's bill. I mean, this is turning not just taxation, but all sorts of other things upside down. But there are uh, uh, conservatives and conservative MPs who do support it, and they are people who are more interested in business, and they can see the advantage of business for getting rid of this accumulation of complex taxes and just having one simple one where everybody knows where they are and everybody can see what you should be paying. And somehow it seems to me that something like LVT gets us back to something which is real, which is about people um, and about their value and about how they interact with one another, what their responsibilities and what their opportunities and possibilities for interaction are with one another. A prosperous country may need a, a, a prosperous agriculture, but uh, I think a prosperous agriculture also needs a prosperous country. And a prosperous country won't emerge unless we have the appropriate incentive taxation system. And that's why I support LVT. I think it's a, I think it's a suitable policy for a time of austerity and a policy that would help us to manage our environment for the benefit of everybody. So I think it's a policy whose time has come, actually. It's talked about as if it's this panacea, you know, this, this zenith, you know, it sort of solves everything. I don't, it's, I don't believe it, nothing does, there's no such thing, da, 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 da. And I think also that's partly the problem is a lot of people, they, they fear it because they just can't believe that one sort of single thing could do so much, could have such a wide impact on all of these social and economic issues and all these sort of negative ramifications become attached to it before it's even had a chance to be looked at and explored and analysed and taken to the next stage where it becomes part of the public debate, where people can really talk about this. Yes, fine, disagree with it, but let's engage more with the public. Let's make it part of the, the popular forum and not just a sort of marginal fringe issue. The UK fiscal system is in need of sincere and responsible revision. LVT offers a tax shift and a solution to maintaining a healthy and sustainable economy that, in time, will create a surplus and facilitate progress. Putting this agenda and opportunity at the heart of the UK political debate can make the positive and fundamental change that is needed. What is heart within a political debate? What kind of UK do we want to live in? Can we make our economy work for us instead of us working for the economy? Could we share the responsibility to create an affordable future for everyone? How shall we communicate our ideas with political leaders? There are many ways to become involved in the change. For education support, contact the Henry George Foundation and the School of Economic Science. For information on how to become part of the UK movement, contact the Coalition for Economic Justice, ALTER and the Labour Land Campaign. And to join the international movement, contact the International Union for Land Value Taxation. Contact local leaders. Share this film run events and promote dialogue about land value tax. 
sign petitions and let your leaders know if you're interested in this change. We have a problem and we need your help to bring about change. The problem is that not enough people know about land value taxation and this stops fundamental change that would benefit us all. Let us all share in the values we create. Thank you.